All right, so I'm gonna do a polar double integral problem. Uh, I think this is number 33 in the textbook in the uh, polar double integral section. Um, so I called this integral i so I can refer to it later. Uh, it's the integral from x equals negative 4 to x equals 4 and from y equals negative square of 16 minus y squared to the positive square of 16 minus y squared. And the integrand is the sine of x squared plus y squared, which immediately should jump out that polar coordinates are a good choice. Um, since uh, we know that we have the relationship r squared um, equals x squared plus y squared. So the entire argument of the sine function becomes r squared. So that should probably make things easier. I'm going to go ahead and draw the region uh, just so it's easier to see what we're integrating over. So the first bound is y equals the square root of 16 minus x squared. So that's just going to be uh, this semicircle with a radius of 4. And then the negative square root of 16 minus y squ x squared is going to be the bottom half of this circle. Uh, so I'll label this y equals negative square root 16 minus x squared. And then up here, y equals the positive square root of 16 minus x squared. And then um, the x bounds are from negative 4 to 4. So I'll draw a dotted line right here and call that x equals negative 4. And over here we have x equals 4, so another dotted line. Um, go ahead and label that. So now um, I'll shade the region just so uh, we know we're not integrating over a circle. We're integrating over a disk. We're integrating over this whole thing, not just the edge. Um, so this is the region of integration. It's a circle, which is another indication that polar coordinates are probably a good choice. Um, so to start... Uh, we'll convert this integral to polar coordinates. So the bounds on um, R are going to be 0 to 4 since the circle or the disk has radius 4. Um, and then the bounds on theta are going to be 0 to 2 pi since it's the whole rotation around the entire circle. Um, so given that, uh, we can write uh, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the integral from 0 to 4. Um, and then we have the sine of r squared by the relationship above times r dr d theta. So this is the integral. Um, the best way to go about this is probably a u substitution. So uh, u equals r squared implies that du over dr equals 2r um, which means that du over 2 equals r dr. So we can go ahead and replace that in the integral um, to make it i equals the integral from 0 to 2 pi. And this one will be in terms of u. So, 
0 squared is still 0 and 4 squared is 16 so the new bounds are 0 16 and the integral replacing r dr um, and r squared with just um, u it just becomes sine of u du and then out here we have the constant one half um, because it's du over two not just du um, so now we can just solve this it's in a pretty easy form to solve now so uh, this equals integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 half times the cosine or the uh, the negative cosine so negative 1 half times the cosine of 16 minus the cosine of 1 or minus the cosine of 0 which is just 1 so becomes that and then we are still integrating with respect to theta I forgot the d theta up here too um, so now we can factor out the negative one half right here so this just becomes negative one half times the integral from zero to two pi of the cosine of 16 minus one d theta which is of course negative one half times um, this integral so since these are just constants it's the whole thing times theta so uh, cos 16 minus 1 all times theta and then that's evaluated from 0 to 2 pi so the end result comes out to be negative one half times cosine of 16 minus one times two pi because two pi minus zero is just two pi and then simplifying this it's uh, uh, just pi times one minus the cosine of 16 uh, because if you factor in the negative to the parentheses and just to like put this in uh, perspective the numerical value of this is um, pi times 1 minus cosine of 16 which is 6.15 about And that's the final answer.